안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. And this video is about design patterns. No, not UI UX design patterns. This video has nothing to do with Figma or Photoshop. Today we're talking about software design patterns. We will learn what they are, why you should learn them, and we're going to see an example. Design patterns help us architecture and structure our code in a way that is cleaner, scalable, and easier to maintain. Design patterns in software development aren't something you can just download or copy paste into your code. Design patterns are solutions to common problems on software development. Solutions to problems that developers in all programming languages and industries face often. Design patterns are best practices that have become sort of standardized over time. They are known across the software industry and they also have their own names like builder, adapter, facade. This means that if you learn them, the next time you change teams or join a company, you will be able to identify what pattern is being used and understand the code base quicker. Or if you start a new project, you will build it using solid structural foundations. Design patterns fall in one of three categories, creational, structural, and behavioral. Creational design patterns give us object creation mechanism for multiple situations, keeping the code flexible and reusable. They are a way to make a system independent of how its objects are created. Structural design patterns focus on how we organize and combine multiple classes when building a larger system while keeping it flexible and scalable. They allow you to change the parts of a system independently from each other. Behavioral design patterns are about how different objects communicate between each other. They provide guidelines for how objects and classes should communicate and behave on relation to one another. If those explanations sound very abstract, don't worry. We are now going to take a look at one pattern to actually understand how they make our code better. From the creational category, let's take a look at the builder pattern. The builder pattern is used when there are multiple ways of creating an object, when we need to create an object that has lots of options. Imagine that we want to create a house class. Houses can have so many different configurations. Some have balconies, backyards, basements, different room number, different toilet number, etc. That means that our class constructor will be something like this. We would have to pack all the options on the constructor, which is going to look worse the more properties we have. Instantiating the class will look like this, which isn't good. If we follow the builder pattern, instead of having one fat constructor function, we will create a builder class and methods that set each one of the configuration options. Using the builder pattern, our code will look like this. We first create a class called house that only has default properties. Then we create a house builder class that will instantiate a house the moment it is constructed. Then we have methods that set each one of the properties of the house and return this which is the builder itself. Finally, we have a build method that just returns the created house. With this code, next time that we have to create a house, all we have to do is instantiate the house builder and call the methods that set the properties we want our house to have. That will set the properties of the house via the builder. And when we are done, we call the build method to get the house we just made. As you can see, that looks much better. We can now create houses with all sorts of characteristics just by calling the methods we need without the need for a fat constructor or ugly code. The builder pattern helps make our code cleaner and easier to manage. Plus, it adds flexibility. For example, if we wanted to add a new feature to our house class tomorrow, we simply add the new feature and a method to set it up. We don't need to change or fix any other part of our code. This easy way of adding new things without messing up the existing code is one of the biggest benefits of the builder pattern. I hope that by now you sort of understand what design patterns are and why learning them will help you. As I said, they're just best practices that have helped developers over many years solve problems we all often face. I don't want to make this video too long and I don't know how many of you are interested on learning design patterns. But if you like this video, subscribe to the channel and comment below. I will make another video or even a series of videos where we can learn other patterns from the structural and behavioral categories. If you like the way I explain things and you would like to learn things like JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter, 
among many others for absolutely free. All you have to do is click the link below to join any of our many free courses you can take right now for absolutely free with me. Click the link below and I will see you there. Onjana, kamzahago, tanahamida. See you on the next one. Daume bayo. Bye bye.